Hey guys, today we'll take a look at some tips and tricks to improve your cable management game. I don't claim to be an expert, but that's something I've practiced with my own setup for the last years, and I'm always trying to improve, so why not share what I've learned through the years, and maybe even prevent you from making the same mistakes I did. And as always, links to all the accessories I will use in today's video will be listed in the description. So first, some tips maybe not related to cable management itself, but that can help you having a cleaner setup. One thing that helps a lot is definitely having nothing on the floor, or at least as little as you can. Whether you have a PC, a subwoofer, cables or any random stuff on the floor, it's always a good thing to keep them off there. I think it looks better that way, you don't risk bumping into these items with your feet or knees, and it's much easier to keep your floor clean if there's nothing that's keeping dust in place. Keeping your floor uncluttered might be difficult depending on what gear you have. One way to do it is to put these items on your desk, like your PC. It's a great way to showcase it too instead of having it out of sight under your desk. And for some other items like power strips, cables or even a subwoofer, you can always mount these under your desk. I'll go in details as for cables and power strips later, but as for the subwoofer, I mounted mine using aluminum banding that I've cut to size and bent to fit the shape of my subwoofer. These are screwed in my tabletop and then in my subwoofer where its legs usually go, so it's super solid but it's still super sleek and doesn't take extra space neither on my desk or on the floor. Another way to clean up your setup is to go with a desk that has a minimal footprint. What I mean by that is to go with something that has maybe two to four leg columns. Side drawers as legs are okay too, like the IKEA LX drawers. And not go with a desk that has full side panels. These make your setup looks confined and limited. Again, it's much harder to keep it clean and it just results in a darker looking setup as light can get under your desk as easily. It's all personal preference, but I think it helps a lot. Keeping what you have on your desk to a minimum also helps a lot. Check if you've got stuff that you only use once a week or maybe even once a month. I'd recommend you find a place to store these items when they're not in use as they will free up some space on your desk and might even help with cable management if they require cables to work as they will be put away as well. Neutral colored setups are also a must, so go ahead with white, gray and black. Wood tones work well as well. I highly recommend that as you probably won't get tired as quickly of your theme as if you go with a red setup, as an example. It might look great first, but it really limits you into buying anything but red accessories and peripherals, and you'll have to invest a lot if you want to change your color theme someday. Instead, I would recommend that you get RGB lights, either LED strips or bulbs, and use these to add some color to your setup. You can always switch it up when you're feeling for a new team. With my exact setup, I have LifeX strips both under my monitor and my desk, as well as a LifeX mini bulb in a concrete lamp on my desk. Then my PC also has an LED strip and my GPU has RGB LEDs too, so I can really go with the colors I want whenever I feel like it. Now in terms of cable management itself, First thing I'd recommend is to minimize the number of cables you'll need. And that can be a thought process, especially when you buy new gear. As an example, if you want to get a new microphone, most people will hesitate between an XLR microphone combined with an audio interface or simply a regular USB microphone. If you go with the first option, you'll need at least two cables to connect the mic to the audio interface and then the latter to your PC while you would only need a single cable with the USB mic. It's all in the details, but these have to be taken into account as the less cables you need, the less you'll have to find a way to hide or manage. Another good example is this A5 Bluetooth speaker that was sent to me by the brand itself, SMSL. They specialize in high-end audio gear like headphone amps and DACs, but they just launched this tiny Bluetooth speaker. With my setup, I really want super high quality audio with stereo speakers and a dedicated subwoofer, but some of you might only need speakers from time to time, whether you mostly wear headphones or simply don't want to invest that much. 
Well, this little Bluetooth speaker could help a lot as it reduces considerably the amount of cables in your setup compared to my current audio system. With mine, I need two power cables, speaker wire between the cabinets, a USB cable to connect to my PC, and RCA cables between the sub and speakers. These all have to be managed in a way or another, while this little guy requires no cables at all, as it has a built-in battery and connects via Bluetooth. You can still use an auxiliary cable if your PC doesn't have a Bluetooth adapter, and you can even play files from a micro SD card or a USB drive. It definitely doesn't sound as good as my current audio setup, but only costs a fraction of the price and takes a fraction of the space too. It doesn't have as much bass as my other Bluetooth speaker, this one is by Blitzwolf, but it's more compact and cheaper too. Still, it produces clear audio with no harsh distortions at high volumes, and it did pretty good for music, but it was especially great for podcast or any voiceover content, making it really great if you watch a lot of YouTube videos. I'll have links down below to where you can find it if you're interested. So this is an example of a product that can help reducing the number of cables you have. Again, it's all about planning before buying. And you could do the same with other peripherals such as mice and keyboards by going with wireless options if they suit your usage. Most wireless mice are fine for office use, but if you're a gamer, you might need to invest a bit more if you want to go the wireless route. And finally, same thing with monitors. You can find ones that have Thunderbolt 3 ports, which lets you charge your laptop, send the video feed and connect to other peripherals all with a single cable reducing considerably the number of cables you might need for said laptop. Now, to keep your cables off the ground, you'll need to mount your power strip under your desk. Most of them have mounting holes where you can slide them on screws that match the pattern and it will stay in place. To do so, I like to draw the mounting holes first on a sheet of paper and use it as a guide to drill holes under my desk. Again, pre-drilling the holes with a drill bit slightly smaller than your screws is a good idea. Then, it should fit pretty snug. Then I usually recommend to get yourself a cable management rack. This could be the IKEA Signum rack, but my standing desk came with its own, and I think it's even better than the Signum. It matches the rest of the frame, and it features small dents that let you route cables where you need them easily. The goal here is to insert every cable excess in there, and it's a good practice to attach the excess of a single cable with a velcro cable tie to keep it compact and untangled from the other cables around. This rack is also really useful to run cables from one side of your desk to the other. When all your cables are in your rack, I like to group the cables that go in the same direction together, reducing the space they will require. A good starting point is all the cables that come out of your PC. I also have my lamps and speakers cables grouped together as they're close to each other on my desk. Now you might need to run cables under your desk that won't rest in your cable management rack. To make sure these don't hang, I like to attach them to the frame of my desk using velcro ties. If your desk doesn't allow that, or if you use simple legs for your desk, you can use cable tie mounts. These are easy to find at IKEA or on Amazon. Most of these have a sticky backing, but depending on the weight of your cables, it might not be strong enough. So I like to screw them under my desk instead, as they often also have screw holes made for this purpose. You can easily stick them where you want first and then add a screw to secure them in place. It's also a good idea to pre-drill a hole before screwing straight into your tabletop. Speaking of tabletops, I'd recommend you go with something like a particle board or a real wooden top as cheaper tabletops like the Linman line from IKEA have a honeycomb paper structure in the middle and that's not really solid. Drilling in those types of tabletops won't necessarily work well. I personally use the Gerton that I've stained myself, but you could go with the Klimpen, which is a fiber board for a cheaper option. Other cheap tabletops from IKEA could do it, but be careful if you want to drill holes in them. As for cables that need to go down, like Ethernet or your power strip cable, anything like that, try to group them together and attach them to one of the legs of your desk. 
If you have a standing desk, make sure you have enough slack for all your height presets. And I would recommend only attaching cables to the sections that don't move away from your tabletop. Some people like to use cable boxes, but that's just another thing on the floor to me, and it can be hard to fit all your cables in a single closed box. But I like to use them in drawers, in fact, mine is in my TV unit and it groups all the cables that my TV, speaker and lights need so that they don't take all the space. It's great as it leaves me some space to fit other stuff in there that way. Last things are those cable snakes which I've seen being more popular in the last year. I haven't tried one but I would guess they don't look that great in real life and are pretty substantial under your desk. And I bet they make somewhat of a mess on your floor at lower height settings when a good part of the snake is on the ground. Personally, I much prefer having the cables that go down attached to one of the desk's legs. So there you have it, all the tips and tricks I could think of. Let me know down below if you have any questions or maybe if you have better tips than the one I gave. I'm all ears and as always links to all the accessories I used in today's video will be listed in the description if you want to check them out for yourself. So hope you guys enjoyed, make sure you like the video if you did and if not just let me know why in the comments below, otherwise don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already as I'll see you in the next video.